some Android phones like the Samsung Galaxies and the Google Pixels have a secure space to hide your private files. But guess what? You can get that same feature on any Android by grabbing this app called Air. With Air, you can get a full private storage space that feels like a native part of your OS. Any files you stash in Air won't appear anywhere else on your device, not in your gallery app or any other app for that matter. Plus, Air lets you hide and even eject this space when you're done, making it invisible until you need it. And of course, you can lock it down with a password or biometric unlock so only you have access. For all of my OG Android fans out there, you probably remember Where's My Droid, the absolute classic for tracking down a lost phone through text commands way before Google's Find My Device app was a thing. It was a fantastic app, but since then, it's fallen behind and no longer works the same way. Don't worry though, I found a great alternative which is also called Find My Device. When you lose your phone, you can use a friend's phone to text yourself a code like FMD along with a command to do things like ring it, even if the phone is on silent mode, get its location, lock it, have it take a picture, or even factory reset it, which I haven't tried yet because I don't want to go through that hassle, but the option is there. For the most part, it works like a charm. Just some options are a little more tedious to get working than others, but once configured, it works just fine. And that's just two out of the 15 apps in this month's episode of the best Android apps. Normally, I'd stick to showcasing just 10 apps, but I'm always on the hunt to bring you guys more options than anyone else. So for this month, I pushed myself even further and found five more apps to show you guys. The first 10 apps are totally free and open source, while the last five, which are extras, are still free, but aren't open source. Also, show some love with a thumbs up if you actually end up downloading at least one of these apps. And don't forget to subscribe with the notification bell turned on so that you don't miss out on next month's episode. Now, let's dive into the next app. If you're like me and are constantly bouncing between AI models like ChatGPT, Google Gemini, and Claude, just to fact check the information provided by each, or to see which has the better response, this app called GPT Mobile is about to make your life easier. With it, you can ask all three models the same question at once and instantly compare the responses side by side. Plus, it keeps a history of all your chats for easy reference later on. And to get it to work, you just need to enter each model's API key, which the app can guide you on how to do. So no longer do you need to jump between apps just to get the right information. Everything is in one spot. Next, we've got Clippy. Ever get a long, sketchy link full of tracking parameters? Just share it with Clippy, and it'll strip out all those extra bits, giving you a clean, shortened link in just a few seconds. It's a simple, secure way to avoid unnecessary trackers when you're clicking around. For anyone tired of cluttered file managers, there's a sleek new file explorer app that makes managing your files a breeze. Like a browser, it lets you open multiple tabs, making it so much easier to switch between folders and move files around. It comes with all the basics you'd expect too, like copying, renaming, compressing, unzipping, a text editor, and more. All wrapped up in a modern, ad-free design. Not bad. It's been a while since we've seen a launcher that actually has potential. But the team at Fossify, known for their simple open source apps, just dropped Fossify Launcher. So far, it's pretty bare bones with just a few customization options, but it's barely on the first 1.0 release. So I, I wasn't expecting much. And based on Fossify's history of making fantastic apps, I'm excited to see what this launcher ends up looking a few months down the line after a few updates. For now, I'd hold off on actually switching over to it since it's pretty buggy, but definitely keep an eye on it. This next app is pretty niche and only a few of you may find this to be handy. But if you're tired of seeing all your photos and videos dumped into one massive unorganized folder, you can use camera date folders to quickly organize everything. This app lets you set up automatic sorting so that every photo and video is organized by year, month, and more, creating a clean and easy to navigate library without any extra effort. To get started, just head to the tab called Paths, 
Then select your camera folder. It's usually under DCIM and then camera. And then hit start on the home tab. From there, the app takes over creating subfolders based on your chosen structure within the settings. Personally, I like to set it to be organized by year and then the subfolders for each month so I can quickly see what I shot each month. Works like a charm. And since we're talking about the camera, this app called Camera Folder is also really unique and useful. It lets you take a photo from within the Recents File Manager page. You know, the page that pops up whenever an app wants you to choose a picture. So instead of selecting an old photo, you can take a new one right then and there. It's pretty random, but I'm sure someone out there can find this to be useful. Another niche but useful app is Autotyper. If you're a software engineer or anyone who frequently types out the same strings of text over and over again, this app connects to other devices like your laptop via Bluetooth and can type for you at the type of a button. Whether it's a long password, email, address, or code snippet, Autotyper can handle it. I only wish that it would type a bit faster, but it still gets the job done. Since last year, you're no longer able to install some older apps. More specifically, apps that were made for versions way before Android 6.0 Marshmallow. But there is a workaround. It's called Install with Options, and it makes it super easy to bypass these restrictions. You just tap on Choose Files, find the APK you want to install, then enable this option that's called Bypass Low Target SDK Block, and from there, you can install that ancient app on your Android. And the fun doesn't just stop there. This app also lets you automatically allow restricted permissions so that you don't have to keep putting in your fingerprint within the app's info page. You can also have it automatically grant all of the app's permissions or be able to upgrade or downgrade an existing app without uninstalling it first. It can also handle split APKs and even install multiple APKs at once. Pretty cool, right? The only thing is that you will need to enable it with the Shizuku app, and if you're not sure how to do that, I'll leave a tutorial in the cards. Okay, now like I said at the beginning, these next five apps aren't open source, but they are still very useful and free to download. The first app is Pixel Bookmarks, which I found thanks to a recommendation from independent underscore bag underscore 2839 on my Reddit page. By the way, feel free to recommend any apps that you want me to show off in the next episode, and if I choose it, I'll be sure to shout out your name as well. Pixel Bookmarks, as you'd expect, lets you save any interesting links into collections, making it a lot easier to keep track of them all. And sure, your browser already has a bookmarks feature, but the advantage with this app is that it's way easier to organize them all since they're presented as giant beautiful cards with covers. Plus, you can also add notes to them, set reminders, and a lot more. I've been using it to create my Christmas list, and it's been working perfectly. Plus, the UI has a similar vibe to Google's Pixel Screenshots app, which I personally love. Whenever I see an Android launcher trying to replicate a desktop experience like Windows 11, they usually do a terrible job. However, Hyperdroid is one of the small few that actually nails it. It's got the same start menu for easy access to all your apps, the same looking icons on the taskbar, an exact looking file explorer that lets you access all your files, and even the launcher settings looks just like the one found within Windows, letting you configure your Bluetooth, personalize the OS, and more. Plus, when you turn your phone to landscape, it really feels like a desktop experience. It's super smooth and works perfectly, and the best part is it's completely free to download with no ads or in-app purchases. Want a cool way to track the progress of the year? TimeWise displays the year as a percentage showing you how many days are left. It also does the same for the current month and the day. And you can even have it keep track of any custom events that you have in the future, like maybe a birthday. It really helps you visualize how much time you have left for certain events or dates to make you more productive. Now for a huge throwback, Flappy Bird. We've all either played it or heard about it, and guess what? It's back. Well, sort of. The original creator abandoned the trademark and it was picked up by a company called Game Tech Holdings LLC, which didn't sit well with most fans since they tried to relaunch it as a crypto scam. 
Thankfully, you don't have to worry about that sketchy version. Someone managed to grab the original Flappy Bird game and made it playable on our newer devices. So you can enjoy the classic without needing to worry about any crypto nonsense. I'll leave that APK right below the like button. Next, we have Negati. This app is perfect for keeping track of your data usage and identifying which days you've used the most data. It also tracks your internet speed in real time and reveals which apps are consuming the most data. For me, it's usually any social apps in Chrome. And sure, your phone already lets you check your mobile data usage within the settings, but it doesn't provide the detailed insights that Negati does. Anyway, tap this video to check out a playlist of past episodes of the best Android apps, or click on this video to explore more awesome Android content that we released in the past. Thanks for sticking around till the end. If I helped you download at least one app, give it a thumbs up, and also get subscribed so that you don't miss out on the next episode. Catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!